Okay, I think we're live. Well, not live. Uh, recording. Uh, new stand. Trying out a funky new stand. We'll see what happens. I'm um, having a little few challenges focusing here with the uh, with the stand, and it's a new phone as well. So we'll just work through it the best we can. Apologies if it uh, becomes mushy or uh, unclear as to what the heck is going on. So I'm working through second turn of BCS Brazen Chariots, the battle. Battles for Tobruk, 1941, and it's the battle axe scenario, and we're having a little bit of fun, and we are in the second activation. Uh, we had these, I'm not even going to try and put that on where the camera is, so we had a one formation activate first, then the, the 11th Indian Brigade activated next, and they conducted a couple of different activities. There's a, do I have my tweezers? I don't. All right, so... Pardon my hands, but in this stack here are these Matildas. And these Matildas fired into, the, well, ostensibly into this hex to drop the support of the 88s that were, you know, they're spread around, but they're in this hex, right? Um, <clears throat> and they fired, they rolled in a natural 11, and that was all goodness for the for the uh, for the uh, Matildas <clears throat> because the unit they were firing at where is that little guy was this particular Italian unit well has a rating an AR rating of uh, three so when we took the factors of the Matilda which are now underneath here dark on it you know six three plus three to six versus the three for this guy and the four for the 88s which would have been seven and then you add in all the other little bits and pieces uh, from the table which if you have the game you can look at it and if you don't i'm sorry i'm not going to pull the table out and go through it one by one but suffice to say that when i when i rolled the dice with the 11 uh it ended up uh, forcing a step loss on this guy and uh, dropping support so that then allowed this unit here, the 1-6 Raj, and I believe that, I'm not sure if that's accurate. I, I think that's the 1-16th, but I don't want to be that guy arguing about what the individual battalions are. But nevertheless, a uh, quick look online, trying to find out a little bit more about the Red Eagles, the 4th Indian Division. Uh, I couldn't find a 1-6 battalion, but anyway, it's all, it's all good. So uh, they assaulted or attacked or whatever you call it, whatever the definition, because they use different words in BCS, but it's an attack for want of a different terminal term. We attacked this hex and also rolled very, very well, but had significant modifiers going in our favor because, you know, this dude was only a three, right? So he he's kind of up against it to start with we had the double objective marker here and we had other factors going in our favor a suppression uh mark mission uh we used the artillery from the, the 11 for indian uh division and we had an adjacent unit so we had an assist and all sorts of good stuff so it ends up being uh 13 or more d2 that means uh these guys who had no step losses, took two, two step losses, and just allowed this guy to advance into this hex. Uh, next activation, which is the point I'm getting to and where it gets a little interesting, is uh, the I activated uh, or used, I should say, the um, 25 MLI. And I really wish I knew what those, all these different formations' names were. Some of them are in here and others are not. But anyway. This, uh, the 2-5, uh, assaulted the, or attacked, uh, box 1104, which, as you can see, with the 5 rating here, is much, much better. This looks like it's foggy, but shouldn't be, because I just cleaned the lens anyway. Um, but the second act, the second action of the Matildas, before these guys activated, and before these guys did their thing, their second activation was to try and barrage these guys. And, you know, they're in uh, clear terrain, but they are in a perimeter fort, uh, borderline fort or whatever it's called, a perimeter line fort. Uh, so I'm unclear on exactly what to do. So I gave the benefit of the doubt to 
the uh, benefit of the doubt to the defender and said they were in terrain and or prepared defense, which in fact they are. Uh, so a four through six would have, uh, they need, the, the Matildas would need for a hit. So they, in fact, rolled a four. So we put a hit on these guys. <clears throat> that then, you know, after this attack, we then said, hey, let's activate these guys, the two five, and they'll, they'll attack. So they attacked. Now it's starting off with a four. And these guys start off with a five. We've got hexide terrain here. We used an air point. To give us support for these guys that's going to add two to that uh, factor there and we went through the exercise of that tallying all those good things up and it was a much uh, closer arrangement because we only rolled at eight this time and it ended up being a net drm of one plus one so that meant it was a nine and a nine is an a1 loss but it's an a1 loss in brackets meaning that only if these guys are in prepared defense well, these guys take a step loss. And in fact, they are in prepared defense, so they took a step loss. So uh, that you think, well, gee, that's really not very good. You kind of did all the right things and drop support and all that sort of fun stuff. But we have to uh, acknowledge that the second column of the combat results table is retreats. And a D, we get a situational D, a situational D, which means that the... Uh, Oh, is that right? Yeah, D situational means the defender will retreat if they are in prepared defense. They won't. They'll take a step loss. Or if they're behind key terrain, etc., which would also be the perimeter defenses, I would imagine. So they've already taken a step loss. Why is that so so foggy up there? Let me see if I can move the camera. There we go. So that means they've got to take a step loss. So these guys die. Bach, Bach's uh, Kampf group is getting the snark kicked out of it. We knocked out the 88s earlier on. The 88s took a step loss. So these chaps, they're going to take a step loss. It's going to be their first step loss. I'm going to put just rearrange this, put the breach marker underneath there. I'm going to find a five for these guys. So they are now at a five. They advance into their hex, and we are one step closer to clearing the Hellfire Pass. So, so exciting, isn't it? There we go. That's uh, with most of the way through an activation. I have this unit here left. He could go uh, one to here and potentially close assault. Oh, no, we can't across the escarpment. He would have to get to this hex here. So I'm going to have to look up the rules to make sure that he can actually uh, move through a zone of control there. And I don't believe he can. Uh, but nevertheless, we'll... Uh, well, in fact, I think he can. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, there's a bunch of guys there. We may, we may not want to try and do that off the bat, as they say in cricket. Tell you how. All right. Good show, India. Well done. Bravo. And we'll carry on. Talk to you soon.